everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters and I am super excited today because today I get to announce to you my next two 100% brand new tooled 16 scale model kits. Uh, this is the culmination of almost a year of R&D and mold cutting and searching stuff out and today I get to show you what those two are and here they are. Here we have, first of all, this is the American GMC, GMC meaning gun motor carriage M10. And also we have the British Achilles 2C. And they share some parts together, but you're gonna notice that a quite a bit of difference between these two vehicles. Starting off with the, uh, the turret and gun, the British Achilles has the 17 pounder in it. This one has the American three inch gun on it. You'll notice that the tracks are different. The running gear is different. Uh, the figures inside will be different too. I'll show you those in a minute as well. But wow, I am so excited. I, I love the M10 as a vehicle and of course the Achilles. It's such a sleek, cool design to these right here. And remember, these are very early prototypes. These are the very first test shots, although they look absolutely stunning just the way they are. There is going to be more detail added onto and a few other things that are changed. These are more or less uh, made up so we can see how they fit together. And wait till you see them up close. They are gorgeous up close on it there. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you all of these up close prototypes. And then I'll also show you I've got a big box of all the sprues too. And I'll show you how the kit's going to look as of it. They are right now on the sprues. Now, both of these kits are available for pre-order on our website, andyshhq.com, right now. You can go on our website and pre-order them there. They will also be available worldwide, uh, Australia, Asia, Europe, England, all of that. You'll be able to find them in stores everywhere. Uh, they do have an estimated arrival date of October is when we're expecting them to arrive. That can always change a little bit, plus or minus, but as of right now, we're looking at October for the actual release date. And they are some incredible, incredible kits, and I'm excited to take them over to the bench over there and show them off to you right there. So, let's get started. Here it is guys, super excited to show you this one. This is the US GMC or gun motor carriage M10 tank destroyer. And look at this thing, this thing is so cool. And once again, I'm gonna point out again for everybody, this is the prototype, the very first test shots, but they are just absolutely stunning looking even just the way they are right now. And I'll kind of give you just a little quick little walkthrough of some of the stuff on here. Uh, first of all, both kits will have metal barrels. These are metal barrels right here. I've just taken both kits and sprayed them with gray primer once they were uh, built up. I just think it adds less reflection when I'm filming so you can see the kit actually a little bit better. And if you look inside here, you see all the ready racks in the back. Um, it will have a 50 cal. Uh, the 50 cal, we only had one built up and it, it's on the top of the Achilles right now, but it will have a 50 cal mount in the back here. And I'll kind of rotate this around and I'll get closer up inside there so you guys can see in a second there. But I wanted to kind of just show you, move that to the side and show you that like the periscopes all rotate, all of them like that. Of course, the hatches all open like that. You can open them up and throw them into the position get my fingernail in there so I can grab it. So if you want to do it in an open position, they've got clear periscopes in there. The engine hatches open up just like that. And of course, the suspension is movable and the tracks are workable on these kits as well. And that's something I want to show you too. I'm going to rotate this around first of all. So the M10 is going to have in it the T51 tracks. As you can see right here, so it's a, uh, a pad track, just like that. And keep that in mind as I show you the Achilles, because the Achilles is going to have a different type of track on it. And since we're talking about that, I'm going to rotate this to the side. And I want you to also pay attention to the road wheels. If you notice on these road wheels right here, these are hollowed out. So it's a different type of road wheel, a different type of drive sprocket, and a different type of idler than the Achilles. And now, as we go around, I'm gonna actually just pull this off and actually let you take a close look up this way. 
So you've got our ready racks inside there with the uh, three inch shells inside. You've got first aid kits. You've got the fire extinguisher. You've got the breech of the gun. Plus like the, hopefully you can see up inside there, all the other equipment that would be inside. I'll flip it over here for you too. See how that's all gonna look. And I'm gonna put this off to the side because this is also really cool. Because you're gonna be able to see inside of it, you've gotta have part of the interior, the floor in there. So those are the, uh, the fiber tubes that uh, were kept the three inch shells all stacked up. And of course on both sides, just like that. And this is the M10. So this has these little extra uh, points on here. And what those are is, I can't think of the name of the word of those right now, but those were going to be, this was kind of like a trade-off. When they made this vehicle, they wanted to create a vehicle that was lightweight. So it didn't have a lot of armor on it. And then there was another group that says, well, it needs to have more armor than that. So they kind of settled on this, that they were gonna put these bosses on it basically, that they could attach applique armor on at a later point easily. Uh, from what I understand, they never made any applique armor that would fit on that. So it was something that just is on the M10s. It's also on the turret. But as you get to the Achilles, you'll notice that they kind of disappear on the actual body of it there. So I'm gonna kind of rotate this around just to kind of show you 360, how the vehicle is gonna look and then come around here, show you the uh, tools on the back. And remember this kit, uh, or actually the real vehicle I should say, is based on an M4A2 Sherman. Okay, and now that you have seen the uh, the go around of the vehicle, I also want to show you the figure that we're going to include. Now, this right here is a 3D printed version of it. Uh, they didn't have the molds ready for the figure, but the CAD files can easily be converted into STL files so they can do a 3D print for me. So this is actually pretty cool that we have it. This is the figure that will come inside, but he will be a plastic kit and he is designed to actually fit right here on the edge of the turret. So he's just sitting there. In fact, let me lower the camera down so you can see it from a side view. There we go, that's a little better view. Now he's not glued on right there, so I'm gonna be very careful as I rotate him around so he doesn't fall off. But get you an idea what he's gonna look like in the, uh, the opening of the turret. Uh, I also find out that he is capable of sitting right here, as you can imagine, and even right here. He makes the most sense because of the way his hand is situated right here, but he, it actually will fit pretty good right there. Hand still rests when he put him right over here as well. So that is the figure that will be included with him, just like that. So now let's take a look at the Achilles. And here we go, here it is. Here is our Achilles. And to start off, I'm going to take this guy out. This is the British soldier that will come inside the kit. You see he's got a little grip right there because he is designed to fit inside the turret and gripping on to this little, uh, little lip of metal right here. You also notice too that I have the 150 cal that um, I was given. I put it on here to kind of show it. The reason the 50 cal is mounted backwards like that too is the way these vehicles were designed, they go... When they travel forward, they were designed to actually have the barrel facing backwards. That way they would never push the barrel into any dirt going down any hills. And then they would have a 50 cal facing forward for protection as they drove around roads or whatever. I always gotta remember too, there's no turret basket in here. So when you rotate it, the guy doesn't go along for the ride. <laughs> but let me take him out for a second there and kind of show you just some of the other things like we talked about earlier. So if you notice right here, these are the, the solid road wheels. On, on this particular kit. Solid idler wheel and a different look to the drive sprocket. And you'll also notice too that those little bosses are not on the side of the turret, or excuse me, of the hull of the, uh, the Achilles. They are still on the turret, including all the little tie downs, things like that. And then I'm gonna rotate this around and you're gonna see the T48 tracks that are on here including all of the spares that come inside and there is a little bit different pattern for the bosses up front in fact since this is sitting here let me turn that to the side we'll move this over here actually let me rotate it to this side and you'll see that the pattern is quite a little bit different it's got a couple extra ones here and there 
And then of course the extra rack up front here that holds the tracks is, is a little different, but uh, not a big deal. Let me move that back out of the way there. Show you the other side here. Same engine deck. There is a difference in the way the tools are assembled on the back. Uh, just the way the British stowed them on there compared to the American GMC uh, M10. Now, one of the main differences that you're going to see between the two vehicles is the turret and the gun, of course. Now, if you notice here how the angle goes up, that's the same on both of these, but the American one shoots back forward. This one kind of flares back. The British one has the counterweights back here that are called the duckbill. They kind of flow way further back than the American counterweights. And then, of course, I told you earlier, there is a three-inch gun on the American one. And the Achilles has the 17-pounder with the counterweight up front. And actually, I'm going to pull this off so you can see closer up inside how the ready rack has a couple of different types of ammunition inside and different stowage boxes. A little different setup. Obviously, the gun breech is completely different. And you still have the uh, foldable chairs inside there see all that now let's move this over to the side and you'll see the racks underneath the the firewall is pretty much the same between the two but you see the racks down here have the two different types of ammunition inside the floor will have all of the uh you know the diamond plate or anything else like that remember this is strictly a early prototype just to show you how it fits together and just like that so put this back on it is such a cool sleek looking vehicle both of them are this one has such a big wide flare on it there there you go guys there is a quick look at the very first test shots now remember test shots for the m10 gmc gun motor carriage and the achilles 2c and i i'm over the moon i think they're spectacular the way they look and remember there's even more detail coming. So this is these are just the test shots to prove size. Now, before I show you the molds, what I thought I'd do is I'm gonna wheel the uh, the Achilles out of the way and I'm gonna leave the, the M10 here and I'm gonna show you the size comparison to some other vehicles that I have in 16 scale to give you a, a size. Cause sometimes you're looking on and you go, they're only comparing to each other. Well, how big is, it, big is it compared to a Sherman or the Tiger or the Stug or anything like that? So let me do that right now. Okay, first up, uh, I have my Stug 3G with Winter Kenton from Dotsberg. And you can see side by side, they're pretty similar in size. The M10's just a, a hair longer uh, and maybe just a touch taller. This is the kit I'm still working on. I've got the uh, the whitewash on. I haven't done much more detailing after that, but that's because these came out and we had to start taking care of uh, getting those built up, things like that. So there is what the Stug looks like side by side with it. And here is my early M4A3 Easy 8 Sherman with some Stug tracks for some reason on the front. Um, and you can see what it looks like side by side to that. Uh, similar size, it's, uh, remember, this one has the wider tracks on it. These are the narrower tracks, but the way the M10 was designed, it flared out a little bit. So it's roughly the same width and dimensions of the uh, Sherman and only a sh little bit shorter just a touch shorter than uh, what the sherman would be but that gives you a good comparison side by side this little board fell over there and of course the achilles is the same size so this would just give you a comparison in size between the two and i've got two more to compare sizes with for you and of course here it is side by side with the uh, the tacom jeep with trailer and this trailer is made up by Soul Models. I just did a video on that if any of you guys are interested. Oh, just to keep in mind too, the, the Jeep trailer does hook up to the back of the M10 to the Sherman. Uh, I've had a few questions about does it hook up to the Sherman and it does. It does hook up to the back there. I think I've seen pictures of it hooked up to it before. I'm not positive on that, but I've gotten that question quite a bit. So, And you can imagine if, if someone found one of those, they would hook it up to the back, load it up with whatever they could get a hold of. But there it is, because you're going to see lots of M10s with uh, American Jeeps next to them there. And lastly, we're going to compare it to the big boy, to the Andes Hobby Headquarters 16 scale Tiger. And you can see it's a lot, lot smaller than the, the Tiger actually is there. Okay, guys, uh, now I'm going to spend just a little bit of time and I'm going to show you some of the sprues 
for the M10 and the Achilles. And remember, these are early test shot sprues, but it'll give you a, kind of an idea how the kit is gonna go together looking at the parts. Now, to start off with, we have our universal part of the track. And what I mean by that is this part of the track is going to be in both kits. This is the underneath pad that actually touches the road wheel part, so the inside of the track. And then the rest of these are the uh, in connectors, which every bit of this edge is all slide molded all the way around and that is to get that hole that hollowed out section of the end connector and then with the end connector there is a guide tooth that gets attached to the end connector and this part is universal on both pieces of track and then i'm going to lay those off to the side for a minute and then i'm going to show you both sets of track side by side so this side here these are the one with the chevron on it this is the t48 and if you notice, the T48 has a guide on it here. That way you keep your track all going the same direction. So you'll get all your track. You'll put a bunch of these guides together. That way you don't turn the track over and realize they're all going one direction except one track in the middle. So that's why the guide will be in there. And there's also some spare track on it. This is not going to matter that much because it's only one way it can go. It's You could flip it either way. It'll still look the same on both of them. Now, keep in mind, too. Uh, the M10 and the Achilles are all based on early Sherman product. So it is very common to see these T48 tracks on American uh, M10s. And it's not uncommon to see these pads on Achilles. So they are technically interchangeable. That if you do have both kits and you want to put one track on the other, they will all fit up together. That's going to also be the same for the road wheels because there are M10s that have this type of road wheel and there are M10s that have this type of road wheel and vice versa with the Achilles. And you take a look at the uh, the wheel section here. So the, the actual rubber part is all separate. This down here, this big one down here with the big rubber is for the, uh, the idler wheel. And you can take a close look at those there. And then you see how the rubber and you stack the rubber together two of those on top of that that'll give you that and next sprue I pull out here this is the ammunition for the Achilles so we got our big 17 pounder shells here these are armor piercing on the bottom they're slide molded and I'll show you the photo etch that we have done up too to make the the end caps and then these are the high explosive rounds and you'll get a couple of these inside the kit for the Achilles obviously and I'm just kind of grabbing parts randomly. The next two parts I grab are the metal barrel. So here is our big 17 pounder, a big piece of uh, aluminum right here. This is our 17 pounder in aluminum. And this is our three inch in aluminum also. So both, both of these are in the kit in their respective kits. I should say this is in the, the, uh, the, this one's in the Achilles. This one's in the M10. And here is the photo etch. There's gonna be multiple pieces of this. This is for the three inch gun. And this one is for the Achilles right here. So you get a nice photo etch uh, in, the, in plate for all of the shells. This is some early on work right here. These two are gonna get stacked inside of each other. There's somewhere there's a guide pin in there, just like, I think something like that. This is your guide teeth for the turret ring and then the top of the turret ring. Okay, now we have a sprue for the M10 and we've got the ammunition for that in here. And if you notice, there are two different ones inside here. We also have the fiber tubes that went on the side for stowage, not in the ready rack, but down stored in the hull. This fiber tubes were something that was used to prevent the ammunition from going off if the vehicle was hit. And you see how the cap would just open up on that right there. You pull it out, pull the ammunition out. There's also some other parts in here, uh, including the drive sprocket, the ring. This is a little bit different than the Achilles one. We'll see if we have that piece in here now. Okay, now what I have is a basically a universal piece because this is the, the back half of the upper hull. And you can see part where the turret will go in here. And this is the, the engine hatch area, which will have the two louvered areas right here. Keep in mind, too, this uh, the M10 and the Achilles are based off of the M4A2 Sherman. So this is the diesel-powered Sherman. 
Um, and then all that running gear, like I said earlier too, is basically Sherman parts. So these parts should be universal on both kits, as well as the, uh, the tool sprue here. And it's also got our front fenders. That's where the, uh, the, the uh, idler wheel will attach and all of our tools, all kinds of stuff like that. We now have, let's take a look at this piece. This is, is this universal? I think this is universal also. So we've got our floor and part of the firewall back here. This is the deflector in the back for the exhaust because here's the exhaust right here. You see that's a pretty good size sprue there. And remember, once I get the real kit, uh, with the finalized sprues, I will go in much more depth on this. This is just more or less to show you guys. Here is the, the transmission cover and the bottom of the turret. And this is the, uh, the mantlet for the, this is the M10. Yeah, this is the M10 one. So I'll give you an idea what that looks like. And now that you saw the bottom of the turret, now I can show you the two different variations in the top. So here is the Achilles sprue. And with the Achilles sprue, you are gonna get a plastic barrel, two-part barrel, but like I said, we include the aluminum barrel inside. This is always kind of like a backup. They always design that if you ever lost your metal barrel, you'd always have something to put on there. And then of course, here is the side of the turret for the, uh, the Achilles and some of the stowage racks bolts for that a few other little parts that are specific for that particular kit and if you're getting one specific for that you got to get one specific for the m10 so here is our three inch gun this big boy down here and you can see how the different shape of the turret sides is plus there's a whole bunch of other little parts on here too that are specific for the m10 let you look at those for just a sec and just a couple more i want to share with you here here is our suspension. Now, this is a universal piece because this is uh, M10, Achilles, and many other Shermans too use this exact same suspension arms. So this is just an early, early Sherman suspension. You can see how it is on here. You get a couple of those because this is enough to do one side of the tank. And there's our Volute Springs. Because this is a VVSS suspension, vertical volute uh, spring system, whereas my other one was HVSS or horizontal volute spring system. And here is another Achilles piece. So here we've got our idler wheel here, the big stamped one. Remember, this can also be on the M10 technically too, and the drive sprocket's different. You see how this is all molded as one big piece? The other one was a ring that you could bolt on and off. And then these are some of the stowage racks for the Achilles, and also the side rack where it would hold the grousers. Okay, here is the lower hull for both kits actually they share the exact same lower hull and like i was saying earlier with some of the other parts this is the same lower hull that you would see on quite a few different shermans you've got the uh the stiffener here and the escape hatches on the bottom <clears throat> and lastly i have the upper hull for i believe yeah this is actually the m10 because it's got the little little things on here to put those bosses on it there so that gives you an idea. Remember, no welds or anything on here yet. It's very early on in the production process, but this gives you an idea what it's gonna look like. And you remember how that separate back plate will flop, plop right on here, give you the rest of the turret ring and the engine hatch there. So there you go, guys. There is a look at the two brand new kits to join the Andy's Hobby Headquarters Large Scale Legion. We have the US GMC Gun Motor Carriage M10 Tank Destroyer and the British Achilles 2C Tank Destroyer. Both kits are going to be coming out at the same time. Same day is the same release date. They are both available for pre-order on our website, andyshq.com. And rest assured, they're both going to be available worldwide, whether it's Australia or England. I know England, this is going to be very, very popular with over there. Uh, and Canada, around the world, all of Europe, Asia, everywhere that you would normally find any of my other kits, these will be available 
as well. The, the date we're looking at right now is October when they'll actually be available to the public. Uh, of course, that is always, you know, can change depending on how shipping situations are, but it's usually pretty, pretty accurate right there. So October is the, the actual planned release date to arrive around the world. So there you go, guys. I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching and please stay tuned because I have many more videos coming.